Hey, man. I don't think we have time to get back to the ship. You better take these and go on without me. Oh, wait a second. Godspeed, soldier. So, you want to learn to fly the company cruiser. Well, to get there, you gotta at least know how to drive the cruiser. So let's get in depth on this monstrous machine and take a sneak peek at how it truly works. We'll start with the basics. Let's kickstart this baby. We'll name her Maria. Key in the ignition, the most efficient way to start her up is by resetting the key about every second or two. It's common belief that you have to wait for the engine noise to change, but that's false. Now our cruiser's ready. Treat this thing like a real vehicle. Putting it in park will only stop it from movement of natural forces. Once you're out of park, you'll start moving dependent on the slope. Holding S, the brake, will prevent this. If you're in drive, holding W, the gas, will send you forward, and in reverse, it'll send you backwards. When you let go of W, it does not alleviate the gas. You will continue at that speed. This means that you must hold S to alleviate your gas. Hope that makes sense. When holding A or D, your wheel will begin turning left or right. Again, just like real life, you can't instantly steer a direction. Quick note that holding the brake will also decrease the steer speed. Alright, now you can drive, but it seems we've found ourselves stuck on a rock. No fear, we have two ways out of this situation. In the driver's seat, pressing space will jump up the front of the car a little. This can free you from some nasty ditches. You can also hop out and push it anywhere on its body. The physics on this are quite real too, except you're really strong. Think about it this way, the further from the center of the car you go, the more effect your push will have. Now that we're out of the ditch, we can use this car for what it's meant for. Transferring. You can open the back of the cruiser and put items inside and they won't fall out no matter what happens. Same thing goes for items on top of the car. Set all your items inside and get back to that ship. If you turn on your magnet with this lever at the back of the ship, the cruiser will magnetize and stay unless you unmagnetize it. Anything inside or on the cruiser when it magnetizes will be collected and stay on even if you leave the planet. Last bit of the basics. You can pop open the hood of your cruiser and take a look at the engine. This green bar is health, and this empty bar is boost. We'll get to the boost later. The health of your cruiser is 30. It goes down as you crash into things or get hit by enemies. Don't worry though, it regenerates over time. If you run out of health, you can say goodbye to that cruiser of yours. Your items will stay on it, but I can't guarantee your cruiser will stay on the planet. You've got those basics. Let's move on to the intermediate level. One of the most vital driving skills is dodging enemies. Your path to victory won't always be clear, so you gotta learn to overcome those obstacles. All enemies when bumped into will cause you to bounce away and take some damage, while also damaging the enemy dependent on speed. Let's go one by one on exterior power. Worms cannot kill the cruiser, but will kill you still. If you're not already in motion, your best bet is to immediately ditch your seat once you hear a worm and pray it doesn't erupt quickly. Dogs will go towards your engine if they can hear it. Your best bet is to either turn off the engine or park the car where the front is blocking noise from traveling anywhere. Giants are one of the largest enemies to Maria. Giants will flip you around your cruiser like it's a toy and blow it up in no time. If a giant is near your car, you want to make sure to have someone bait it away before it can cause any damage. They can grab you out of the driver's seat but only after flipping you around to get close enough. Old birds are another big enemy of our car Maria. Old birds will blast you out of the driver's seat and flip the car around with their rockets. The rockets themselves don't do damage to the car, but the blast they generate sure can do the trick. Just like giants, you want to make sure no old birds will get in your way. They can take you out of your cruiser from a range, which makes them more dangerous. And baboon hawks are of no real threat unless they want items that are in your cruiser. If they want those items, your cruiser is going to turn into ashes pretty fast. There's a way to avoid this though with our next little trick. You can drop items on the sides of the cruiser and it'll hold them in nice accessible spots for when you magnetize. And it'll stop those pesky baboon hawks from blowing up that cruiser. They'll just stand there since they can't get to the items and it'll make for a free kill. 
They should work with putting items on the top of the cruiser as well, but I've had a single occasion where Hawks still went inside, so I just prefer to put them on the side. It should be noted that in V56, all you have to do is look straight up and the items will stick to the side of the car, but in any version higher than that, you have to actually be on the car. All right, resuming some intermediate text, we can use the weed killer to communicate anywhere on the map. The weed killer noises are global, meaning that everyone on the map can hear them no matter where they are. So using this can make a sort of language with your team and use them as signals for important messages. For example, you can spam equip unequip to signal that a jester is winding. All right, now we're finally gonna start getting into those boosts you so desperately wanna hear about. At Maria's engine, you can spray it to heal her, or if her health is full, it'll start filling the boost bar. To efficiently spray the weed killer, you want to hold left click at about 0.7 second intervals. One spray will give you one boost at a max of 5 boosts. Each bottle gives you a minimum of 25 sprays and a max of 30, depending on how well you can learn to optimize your left clicks. Now that you're full on boost, pressing space while driving will propel you with some jet boosters rather than give you a small hop. Let's learn some simple jumps with our no fuel. Holding a directional key when you press spacebar will influence the direction of the boost heavily. The inertia from movement prior to jumping will also influence your direction. With this all in mind, let's find a couple small useful jumps on different moons. Experimentation. You can jump up to main and have Maria be safe from any exterior power, then jump back down to drive back to the magnet. Offense. You can jump to the fire exit, then back down and do the same thing. Advance. You can get across the fire valley, and artifice up and over the fences for some safe routes back to ship. Cool. And this last tip is extremely vital knowledge. Landing on your wheels from any height will cause you to not take damage from the cruiser. Making sure that you land on your wheels is the most important thing to not blowing up the cruiser. Now that we've gotten past that, we're finally diving into our advanced section. This is where you're gonna learn to fly. <laughs> got two important texts to discuss before that though. One is path blocking. Maria has got a big body. She can block not only the line of sight of enemies, but also the pathing nodes of enemies. If she is in the way of nodes for certain enemies, it will force those enemies to go around and lose track of you. A good example of this is right between main and fire of artifice. If Maria is in the way, giants cannot path through her and will go all the way around the warehouse. You can also hide in the corner of fire and enemies will almost immediately lose track of you. This is super helpful if giants are camping fire and if you can't go inside for any reason. For the line of sight blocker part of this, you can often angle the back of the cruiser to completely block any enemies with vision from seeing you. Last thing before we get into flight, you can break B AI using the cruiser and allow yourself to get some free beehives. I'll hand this portion of Namaku to explain it better. The bee tech is a tech where you can detach the bees from the hive by placing the hive somewhere the bees cannot pass through. Like the top of this fence on artifice, because they path to your last known location, and the bees are just not gonna aggro because they need line of sight of the player and their hive to aggro. So now for the CC part, you need to grab the hive, go on top of the CC and drop it while the back is not open. If the back is open, this is not gonna work. Preferably, you're gonna place it right in the middle here, not too far forward, not too far back either, like this. Then you're just gonna walk away. Now you're just gonna try to go around this without aggroing them again. You lose line of sight by uh, having the back of the CC between you and the bees. Jump on the CC, sit down, and drive away. And this is gonna have the same effect of detaching the bees from the hive. All right, we've discussed everything, so we're back here again. You wanna learn to fly the cruiser. So let's talk about flight. Cruiser flight involves usually using more than three boosts to get yourself from point A to B without touching the ground. It provides a way to avoid exterior power entirely and secure every single item in the game at midnight. First, let's cover some important ground. When flying in the cruiser, flying forward will sometimes cause the cruiser to hit yourself and you will simply die to inertia midair. This is why it's best that you boost sideways. On top of this, making sure your Maria magnet is on is essential to not blowing up when making it home. Turn on your magnet before you leave, or have someone do it for you. The cruiser can also bounce off of a lot of surfaces without taking damage, which can be both advantageous and disadvantageous. Trees are a perfect example of this. Sometimes trees will get in your way and you'll bounce off not reaching your target, and other times you can bounce off of trees and make it further. I will also stress, 
You will never be able to perfect this skill with just a few minutes of time. You get a feel for how the cruiser boosts, and that allows for consistent and creative boosting. There will be times where your lineup has to be slightly adjusted to a miscalculation or an external factor, like enemies, meaning you will have to understand how the cruiser flies. You find a rhythm for boosting after practicing it. For now, reference the spacebar at the top right and the boost noises to help start learning. Let's go map by map and talk about flight. Experimentation. You can fly to main and from main to near ship. It's quite impractical. To do the two main jump, you're gonna do two quick jumps purely towards your target, one more spaced out and two at the end in the opposite direction to slow you down. On a five star difficulty scale, I would give this jump three stars. There's a wall that will kill you if you hit it too hard, but you shouldn't blow up that often attempting it. You also have to manually line yourself up on a nearby flat surface to make sure this is possible. To come back to the ship, Getting a straight shot is difficult because of a few obstacles in the way near the ship. You have to get a lot of vertical height and then jump towards the ship and fall over the obstacles to hit near the magnet. This jump I would say is 4 stars, simply because there's so much room for it to go wrong. This map sucks, the car literally spawns under a rock. Your best helipad is right in front of the ship since every obstacle is extremely tall and the ground is uneven. If anyone manages to make a 4-5 to five boost lineup from ship to main or fire that doesn't damage you or the car, I'll give you 10 bucks. Full honesty, it's gotta be consistent too. This map has realistically one boost that I was able to find, and from where you start it really isn't worth it. This whole map gets 5 stars of difficulty. This is an interesting one. The lineups on this are super creative. You can get from ship to main, but the lineups are extremely precise. You can either do 4 boosts towards, and 1 boost counteractively adjusting, landing in the valley, or you can full send it and rely on bouncing on the bridge and hitting a main wall to take no damage. This one is rad. The first one is a 4.5 star difficulty, while the second one is definitely a 5 star. There's too much room to go wrong, but when you pull it off, it's sick. Getting back is a different story, don't expect anything much to work. This one has some decent flight actually. You're not going to be able to do much right next to the ship however, since we start surrounded by big boulders. You can drive in the open and make it to fire with our normal technique of 3 boosts towards and 2 against though. However, it's way easier to just drive up and do 2 to get up, and then the next jump use 3 towards ship and 2 against to slow the fall. And you'll find a nice landing spot that makes for a 4 second drive back to Magnet. This is probably 2 stars in difficulty. Really easy to master with such a large landing pad. Nothing much for main unfortunately, since there isn't much room to get there on the hills in the first place. There are a lot of trees on this map just like Val, but that doesn't stop Maria from a bit of bulldozing to make way. Now from ship, do our normal 3 towards, 2 counteractively towards the end. You'll land pretty close to main with a lot of driving room. This is about 2.5 stars I'd say. To get back to ship, you can go directly on the magnet as long as your trees have been bulldozed. This is another tricky one because of us not being parallel with the magnet. You also can't see precisely where the ship is that easy, making a true lineup even harder. It's just best to land near the ship instead of on magnet. There are a decent amount of jumps you can do on Adamance. Taking a full 90 degree turn off the magnet will line you up almost perfect to do a jump to main. It's fairly consistent, with our normal 3 jumps there and 2 jumps counteractively. This jump I'd give about 3.5 stars. Not too hard, but the trees don't make it any easier. For getting back to Magnet, you can ride a little closer to fire and jump off of this portion 3 times to land on Magnet. If you don't like having to be precise, you don't have to full send it and you can do 3 there to against to land near ship. Now we're into the snowy maps. These are a lot harder since you cannot see where you're going most of the time. So you have to purely remember the timings and lineups in order to safely land. There's also a lot of open space near the fire valley. So if you want, you can fly over there from ship. It'll just be a little tedious to get back. You're not clearing that mountain safely with five boosts. Same goes with main mountain. The trees are also a big problem. So this map gets four stars. Dyna is the easiest snowy map to drive on in my opinion. I specify drive because flying isn't so easy when there are 10 billion trees. However, you can still consistently fly from the ship and to the entrances using our usual 3 there, 2 counteractively method. You'll land right in front of main, or if you feel like being dangerous, you can aim for this small part of the wall that is bouncy and you'll take no damage with 4 boosts. 3 stars of difficulty. Well, uh, 
Um, I don't really know why you would want to do this, to be quite honest, but hey, I won't judge. You can get onto the top of Titan with a lineup. Three with no directional input, one with a forward input, and another with a right input. You can get back down relatively simple. Just do one boost straight up and then one boost away from main. The cruiser won't take fall damage because of what we discussed about landing on the tires. This is the one you've truly been waiting for. This is the high quota method, something extremely useful. So let's do a breakdown of this lineup. First, you drive the car into the corner of fire, moving left and right to fully nudge yourself in there. This is how the cruiser will stay most of the day. The reason for such is that the engine produces noise, meaning that dogs can't hear the engine idling in this location. Then, once you're ready to make it home, back up all the way until you hit the mountain. Go and drive, and then put yourself forward a tad so you don't get stuck on the mountain or wall. Make sure you're straight, and send it. Two boosts in rapid succession to clear the building, a third delayed boost to keep height, and then the one to two final boosts are for readjustment. If you find yourself too far behind the magnet, insert a boost holding W in the fourth or fifth boost. Though, as long as you're lined up straight, you shouldn't have to readjust. It should be a straight shot game of timing jumps. Now, as long as your magnet is on, you'll perfectly magnetize and all of your loot is secured in about four seconds. Pretty crazy. If you happen to find yourself on Eclipse, I can't guarantee the route to fire is going to be clear for driving, so here's how we make it there without seeing a single enemy. Have someone at the ship stay to demagnetize you and turn on the magnet once you're gone. Once you're off, send two jumps towards fire, a third jump away from the antenna and to the wall to clear it, then a fourth jump towards the antenna and to the wall to make sure that you don't go too far backwards. This entire wall is bouncy and you will not take damage when you hit it. It lines you up perfectly for your fire to magnet lineup as well. Well, now you have it. You are a certified Maria Flyer. You can actually get use out of this terrible handling vehicle. I'm not really going to mention Embryon because that map is so open and there are at least a hundred different ways to make it to and from entrances. Shout out to Brad for teaching me flight in the first place, and huge shout out to Maku for working on this video with me and providing almost half of the knowledge presented. You've passed flight school, so get out there and start getting creative. But not too creative, else Zekris might take away this fun aspect of the game too.